speak the name of Jesus over every person that's listening, that's watching, that Jesus will meet every need that you have, everything that you're seeking, and everything that you're looking for him for. Jesus says, I will hold back no good thing, no good thing. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you this morning to Jesus' Lord Ministries. I want to thank Pastor Mike for having us here once again. You know, it's an, it's an honor to be able to stand behind this pulpit because Pastor Mike's been through some good stuff. He's been through some hard stuff, but God's seen him through and God's told him to do this. And here we are once again. I don't know what week this is. I think it might be week five or week six. But anyhow, I want to say thank you to Pastor Mike and to Jesus is Lord <clears throat> Ministries. And thank you to you for watching. Because without you watching, then it would probably be worth naught. But, and for you that's all here, you know, I always say we got a full house. And I thank God for the full house. You know, uh, God says these words that we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. Just go to the Lord in prayer with me. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your love. We thank you for your generous generous offering of Jesus Christ to each one of us. That we can walk in salvation, that we can walk in the fact knowing that God is God. He's our God. He's our peace. He's our joy. He's our happiness. And you know what else He is? He's our everything. So I don't know what you're doing today or what you're facing this morning, but let me tell you something. You can face it with God. Because, see, I, I was struggling this morning. I was struggling yesterday about some things. And, and you know, and, and last night I, I just had a hard time wrapping my mind around some things. You don't need to know what it is. It's, you know, nothing to do with you, but it was all me. And I just couldn't get comfortable. I couldn't get the peace of God. I couldn't go to sleep. And, and, and then all of a sudden I started saying the Lord's Prayer or our prayer that Jesus gave us to pray. And as I said that prayer, peace become, be, became over me. So, and that's what God will do for each one of us. Now, Father, I thank you for your peace. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your goodness. Now, Father, the people that are listening, give them ears to hear, a heart to receive, and eyes to see you, Lord God. Give them boldness to speak Jesus. Give them boldness to stand up for what's right. Give them boldness to say Jesus is Lord of lords and King of kings. Hallelujah. Now, Father... I thank you for taking these lips of mine, using them to bring forth your word. Lord, as we bring forth your word today, thank you that every word will come out to bless you, Father God, and to bless those that are listening. Lord, not me, but you, Father God. We thank you for that, Father God. Now, Lord, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. And everybody can say, Amen. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Excuse me, I got a, my eyes itching. I had to scratch it. I want to make a declaration and a decree today, like I do every Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. And here we go. Well, I do it more than that, but I do it every morning here at Jesus' Lord Ministry. I make this decree and declaration so that we know who we are in Jesus. And we know that God's with us. <clears throat> I want you to repeat it after me. And say it boldly. Don't be mumbling. Say it out loud. Let it, know, let, it, let it be known. You ready? 
The Lord is with me today. Come on, say it. I am blessed coming in, and I'm blessed going out. Hallelujah. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. If God be for me, who can be against me? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me, I will condemn with the Word of God. The blood of Jesus covers me, and by His stripes, I am healed. I find favor and good understanding with God and with man. My God shall supply all my needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. All my needs, right here. Thank you for repeating that with me. But right here, right here, we got it. We got the answer. And I'm speaking today, I'm probably speaking more to me than I am you, because, like I said, some of the things that, that's been going through my mind, my, my, but, uh, the enemy's been working on my mind, but God is, is clearing it. He's taking it so that I can bring forth the word. He's taking my mind and he's washing it with the blood of Jesus. And if you're fighting a battle in your mind, no matter what that battle is, plead the blood of Jesus over it. Because I tell you, when the devil can get in your mind and, and keep you from peace, keep you from your joy, keep you from your happiness that God gives you, let me tell you, then he's winning. But if you can say, my God shed his blood for me so that I can walk with a clear mind, a clear spirit, and a clear heart. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. What am I doing today? Oh, I know. We're, we got a message here today, and uh, it's called uh, Be Victorious. And it's, <laughs> it's ironic that God gave me this, and... Like I said, you know, when you, when, when, and, and I might not be the only one. Then again, I might be. You know, you, 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 you might be able to not have to battle. You might be able to not let little things bother you. But, I'm, but, but they do sometimes. They bother me. But you know what? The Word says in Romans 8.37, 8, it says, Now in all these things, in all these things, we are me, we are more than, oh, listen to what the Word of God says, we're not just, we're not just, we are more than, more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Hallelujah. Because of the love of Jesus Christ, because of Him going on that cross and dying for us, we can stand up and say, I am more than. See, I'm not just. I don't just get to the right here. There's a line right here. I don't get just to this line and stop. But see, I take a step over that. And I say, I am more than. I'm more than that line because of Jesus. I'm more than what God uh, has for me that I haven't received yet. God's got so much for me that, that, it's, in, that it's just incredible for me to overcome and to understand. And sometimes I get myself and I say, what in the world am I going doing this for? You know, you get your mind working and you say, oh my, oh my. And then all of a sudden God slaps you upside the spirit head and you say, oh, I'm sorry, God, that's right. I'm more than a conqueror. Why? Because of Jesus Christ. Are you with me today? I said, because of Jesus Christ, we're more than conquerors. Hallelujah. We don't have to be defeated. 
Sometimes I feel defeated, but then after a couple minutes, I get myself together. I pull myself up by the bootstraps, and I say, here we are, God. Here I am, God, back with you again. Listen to what uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 says. It says, for I know, this is God speaking. Listen, oh, this is awesome. I, 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 I really, really, really enjoy this scripture. Matter of fact, we see it so sometimes, and it just makes, makes us just uh, joyous and, and happy. We have it on, the, on our uh, porch when we drive up in, the, in, in our drive. And I look on that porch and I see it. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declared the Lord. Who declares it? The Lord. Oh, come on, people. Who declares it? The Lord. He, he says, for I know. When God knows something, it's time for you to know. See, we, sometimes we just got to get a knowing that we know. See, sometimes we have to let the enemy know that we know that God said that he knows. See, we got to know that God knows that the enemy knows that we know that God knows that we know that we are victorious. Do I need to repeat that or can you, can you get a hold of it? We know God knows. God says, I have a plan for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Now, as Pastor Mike says all the time, we're not just talking about money. Money's part of it. But plans to prosper you in health, plans to prosper you in, in uh, being able to go out and do things for yourself, being able to go out and, and see the beauty of God. My wife was telling me about this moon last night. It was called a, a strawberry moon. It was really pink. Now, I didn't get up out of bed and see it because I told you I was going through some stuff that I should have got up and seen it, but she took a picture of it, I believe, or she showed me a picture. I don't know if it was her picture or not, but it was absolutely beautiful. Now, she thinks I don't really look when she shows me pictures, but I look. You know, she sometimes just shows it to me, and I look over, and she thinks, oh, you ain't really paying attention. Yes, I am. She just sometimes don't know it, but I do. And, but that moon was so beautiful. That was something that God prospered us with seeing. Do you understand what I'm saying? The beauty of this earth, the beauty that God's placed in front of us, what the pictures that he's made for us in the sky or on the ground, or my wife's got these flowers growing up, and she just talks about them all the time, how pretty this flower is and that flower. She can tell you the names of it. I couldn't tell you the name of it. They're red to me, and they're purple or yellow, but... They're beautiful to her, and her being my wife, that means they got to be beautiful to me because I see the beauty in them. And she planted them, and she just loves them. And that's something that God prosper her with. Are you understanding? It's not just money when God says, I prosper you. It's every little thing on this earth, the little things. It's what makes it so, so much of a blessing. The little bitty things. We need to sometimes just stop. There's an old saying, stop and smell the roses. But we need to sometimes stop and just listen to God and see what he's, what he's saying to you about how he knows the plan he has for you. Let me finish reading it. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. And it goes on, it says, plans to prosper you and not harm you. Now, why do you think that's in there? See, he wants to know. See, people has got it in, in their head and in, in their minds that this God that we serve is a big God. He is. He's awesome. He's bigger than big. But he's also a loving God. But see, some people think that God is, is there to harm us if we don't do this right, if we don't do that right. He's going to harm us. God don't do that. God says when we make a mistake, when we make a mistake, are you listening? When we make a mistake, God says, come to me 
with outstretched arms and ask me to forgive you. And guess what? He will forgive us. That's the, that's the purpose and main characteristic of God, is to forgive us. See, when Jesus Christ went to that cross and died for us, that cross represented the victory that it brings to us. See, the cross used to be at one time a symbol of defeat, but Jesus brought it forth for a symbol of victory. For the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness, but unto us which are saved, but unto us which are saved, it is the very power of God. It is the power of God because it brings something to us. See, when Jesus went to that cross and died for us, he brought peace, love, and joy. He suffered for us so that when we make a mistake or when we blow it or when we totally mess up, we can run to God. Don't run away from God. If you're running away from God, you're doing the wrong thing. Run to God. When someone hurts you, run to God. When someone wants trying to, to talk nasty about you, run to God. God will take care of it. And then when you mess up and you say things you shouldn't say, or, or you do things you shouldn't do, God will forgive you if you go to Him. James says, confess your sins, for He is just to forgive us. So, so run to God when, when, when we mess up. Run to Him. This is how we become victorious. Let me read Romans 8. Let me just go back here a little bit. Romans 8. And nigh in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. When we make a mistake, that's what makes us conquerors. Because we run to Him because He loves us. Listen to what James 4a says, draw near to God, draw near to God, don't run away from Him, don't try to back off from God, draw near to God, get up to God and wrap your arms around Him, and guess what He says, draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Wow, what a statement, what a promise. Out of all the prom, I was reading something, pastor's got a book about the promises of God, and, and, and I was reading it last night, started reading it, and, and all these promises, but this promise here in James 4, 8 is a promise from God that says if we draw near to Him, He will draw near to us. Boy, it could be thousands of promises, and it probably is. But this one here means everything when you blow it. It means everything when you need God. It needs, means everything when you need to stand up and say, God, I, 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 I'm at my wick's end. You know that old saying, I, I, I came to the end of it, but I can't go no further. God says, all you got to do is reach out. Draw near to me, and I'll draw near to you. Oh, what a promise of God. Oh, what a promise. What a promise. What a promise. Hallelujah. I can't, can't say it enough. Draw near to God. I had to draw near to Him last night. I was just in a... I, some things going through my mind and my heart. Some things that I, that, that, that I said I messed up on, and, and I didn't stand up. The, for the right things, but you know what? I mean, it wasn't nothing nasty or bad or anything to to anybody. It was just me. Okay, it was me thinking that I that that how I messed up by doing something. But God says it's okay. I'll fix it for you. Oh, what a promise! He said that He's going to fix it for me. When it comes to finances, He's going to fix it for me. When it, when it comes to health, He's going to fix it for me. When it comes to wealth, He's going to fix it for me. When it comes to being able to just love somebody more than, than, than you think you can, He's going to fix it for me. 
He's not going to let me down. Instead of arguing with somebody about the Word of God, just draw near to God and let Him fix it. Let Him fix it for you. See, I, I, I was speaking to somebody about something, and, and they looked at me and says, I don't want to hear that stuff about God. That's because I've been hurt. I walked away from the church and everything else. And God told me, don't argue with Him. Don't argue with Him. Don't try to convince Him now. But, but, walk in love, walk in respect of what he's saying, and hear what he's saying, and then pray, and then you'll see my glory come in his life. And that's what I'm believing for. This young man, he may have walked away from the church, he may have walked away from God, but God didn't walk away from him. And I'm believing God for his salvation, I'm believing God for his healing, I'm believing God got going to turn things around in his life, and all of a sudden, him and his family, he's going to stand up and say, wait a minute, i got to serve God. I believe that. I believe that. Is it anything I did or say? It's something sometimes that you don't say. Are you with me? See, sometimes we can say nothing, and it means a lot to somebody. Because I could have argued, oh, no, God loves you. You can't walk away from him. You can't turn your back on him. Well, then what would that have brought? But see, to walk in love, to walk the way Jesus walked. Jesus went into the sinners. He didn't beat them over the head. He just walked with them and loved them. And that's what we're called to do. We're called to love them. And that's, what, and, and that's what we're going to do. And that's what I'm going to do. And I believe that. That because of that, the way God told me to do it, I believe this man's going to have salvation. I believe he's going to come back to God. And you know what? The Bible says where two agrees on earth is touching anything. It shall happen. And I got up my wife. And we, and we, I don't know, we talk about things, but we don't say a word. See, that's the way me and my wife is. We, we can talk about things uh, and, and just knowing what each other's talking about and everything else and not say a word. I didn't have to say to her, we need to pray for him. We need to do this. and need to. She knew. She said, well, we're going to pray for his salvation. We're going to pray that God touches him. See, she knows. And that's my commitment to God with her that the two of us are agreeing. Think about that. Me and uh, Stephen was talking about the wife, how precious the wife is, how much she means. Well, I, you know, I said, you know, she, she, she means everything to me because I, I can't just do it on my own. That's the reason he gave me a mate. But, but my mate, my mate, I don't know. Somebody's doing something. But my mate knows that when I need something, it happens. God loves us just the way we are. There's a noise back here. We're just trying to listen to it. So if you see me turning around, don't worry about it. I can get louder than the noise. So hallelujah. Now let me go back. It says, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you, oh good God almighty, I don't know how I got in this scripture today. I, I really don't. I wasn't planning on this scripture. But this scripture here, it just, it, it opens up everything to each one of us. If we listen to it, if we understand it, if we know what's going on, listen. It says, plans to give you a hope and a future. Okay, thank you. Plans to give us a hope and a future. Think about it. He's giving us, you, hope. That's where we're missing a lot of things from. We're missing hope. But we also got a future. Think about that. Sometimes we don't put hope and future together. But we have to. When we put, because God says right here, He says, I plan to give you a hope and a future. Sometimes we need to put hope and a future together together. And look at the future and say, my hope is coming. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, it says, 
Now faith is. Now faith is. Now faith is. Now faith is. The subject that we hope for and the evidence of things not seen. That's our future. Faith is the subject of things that we hope for. And it's the evidence of things not seen. See, when we walk in faith, when we walk in hope, when we walk in, the, in, in that things that we don't quite see yet, some people say, well, why don't God just show us what, what's the next step is so we don't have to keep going through all this and doing all this and messing up? Because if he showed you, you wouldn't get there. Oh, I know that's, that, that don't go right with a lot of people. But see, if he shows you sometimes where we're going before we get there, we'll mess it up. We'll mess it up. That's why he says, listen, I give you this day your daily bread. This day your daily bread. He said to the people that Moses had out in the wilderness, the Israelites, he said to them, I'm giving you manna for the day. I don't want you to hold on to it for tomorrow because you're getting fresh. I don't want you to worry about what you did yesterday because today is the day of my salvation, says the Lord. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of hope. Today is the day of future. Today is today. See, if we start worrying about, well, now I'm speaking to me again, okay? We start worrying about tomorrow, you get all messed up. You get all beat up. I got to say that again because you didn't hear me. If we worry about tomorrow, we're just going to get all beat up because tomorrow hasn't got here yet. But God's already in the tomorrow taking care of us. Then why don't he show me what tomorrow is? Because it's an adventure for us. Ooh, did I just say that? It's an adventure for us to follow God and to walk in his goodness, to walk in his mercy, to walk in his grace. Think about that. Think about that, brothers and sisters. Yes, we want God to heal us today, but if he doesn't, it, it, might, it might happen tomorrow. The word of God says, by his stripes we're healed. Well, I don't feel the manifestation of the healing, but it's still true. Faith is the subject of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It's true. You may not see it, but God said it. And if God said it, that settles it. Remember, I think I said this before, but if I didn't, I'm going to say it now. If I did, forgive me. You're going to hear it again. You're going to hear a repeat. Dee, 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 dee. Mix, repeat, repeat, repeat. I seen a bumper sticker one day, and it said these words. It says, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Now, that's true in a sense, but it's not truth. True and truth don't mix sometimes. Here's the truth. God said it, that settles it. Whether you believe it or not, it doesn't take you to believe it. God said it, and that settles it. It's the answer. Then we believe it. Because if God said it, that's it. That's it. Do you understand what I'm saying? This bumper sticker said, God said it, and I believe it. Take out the I believe, and then that settles it. See, you believe it after you realize that God said it, and that settles it. Then I believe. Because faith is the subject of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. God said it, that settles it. Glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah, that, that's exciting. Think about that, people. God, in his word, says it. All we have to do is get a hold of it and know that it's settled already. 
God said it, and that settles it, and I believe it, and it's taken care of. See, my future doesn't rely on me, in a sense. It relies on what God's got for me. Now, it relies on me now, after it relies on what God's got for me, it relies on me to go and get it. Are you with me? God's got a plan. And He will reveal that plan to you. A plan of hope and a future. He will reveal that to you when you go for it and get it, when you walk in that faith. Faith is. Faith is. The Word of God says you, without faith it's impossible to please God. I didn't say that. God said it. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Think about that for a moment. See, I can believe God for everything, but, but, if I don't have the faith that He's going to come through, then what's the use? Faith is, it is not was, it is not will be, faith is. It's now, now faith is. The King James says, now faith is the subject of things hoped for. Now, when is now? Now is right now. Deuteronomy says, now, what does the Lord your God require of you? What does the Lord your God require of you? Now, but to love Him, to walk in all of His ways, to do the things He's called you to do. Now, now, now. See, we want to let the devil work on us about tomorrow, but let me back up for a minute. We want the devil, the devil wants to work, work on us about yesterday. What we did yesterday. How bad we messed up yesterday. Come on, has anybody been there? How many times has the enemy come? If you wouldn't have done that yesterday, if you wouldn't have done that two days ago, if you wouldn't have done that last week, if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't, guess what? It's gone. Yesterday's gone. There's nothing we can do about it. But if you messed up, ask for forgiveness and walk with God. And if you made a mistake, ask God to help you. If you did something wrong, ask God to help you straighten it out. But you can't fix yesterday because it's over with. But the devil wants us to stay in yesterday and then he wants us to worry about tomorrow. Well, when tomorrow gets here, when tomorrow gets here, I'm going to do this. When tomorrow gets here, I'm not saying don't plan something. I'm not talking about planning. I'm talking about worrying about what tomorrow is. Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Whoa, glory be to God, you didn't hear that. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Why? Because God's already there taking care of it for you. But see, here's what happens. When we worry about yesterday, we worry about tomorrow, we're forgetting today. We're forgetting all the blessing God has for us right now. The blessings that He has for us right now. See, God has a blessing for each one of us today. Today is the day of salvation. And that salvation means not just being saved, it means to prosper, it means to be in good health, it means to, to walk, be blessed, to, to, to walk joyfully, to, to reach out and shout for God, to God. I might add a few things on there that, that you might not see someplace else, but that's okay, I'm up here talking, not you. So, it, it, it's the fact that this is what it means to me. And it could mean the same to you. See, I got, I got to, I got to, I got to, you got to, we got to con be concerned of today. Today. Today is God's day for us. Jesus might come back tonight, so there won't be no tomorrow. So we don't have to work. Oh, glory. Come on, Jesus. Wouldn't that be something? He come back tonight or today and we won't have to worry about tomorrow. We can forget everything we've done yesterday. That's how he says to live. 
Live like today's the last day. Live like today's God's coming back. Live like today's God's coming back. Why? Because He's coming. He's coming. I got a, a shirt that says, oh, I forgot what it says. It's, oh, uh, I don't know. What? It says that normal, remember since the pandemic and everything, everybody's talking about normal, when normal coming back, how, when it's going to happen, how's it going to happen. Well, see, normal's not coming back. That, that, I, I don't see normal. Because there's not going to be another normal again. But Jesus is coming back. I said, but Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's coming back. Let me get back to this scripture. Where where was I? Oh. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. See, when we realize that God's called us and has a plan and a future for us and hope for us, that's when we're going to say, Hey, God, I'm calling for you. Where are you at? Hey, there you are. He don't go far. God's only as far as you allow Him to go because He's right here constantly. He's right by my side. He says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. There's nothing that can take my love away from you. Oh, wow, glory be to God. Think about that one. Nothing, nothing can take away God's love from us. Nothing. Now, you can turn your back on God and take your love away from God, but God's love is still there because Jesus still died on that cross for each and every one of us. God's love for us is still there. And it says, and you'll come and pray to me. You'll come and pray to me. See, this is what God wants us to do. He wants us to communicate. Well, what is prayer? Well, I'm glad you asked me that question. That's a good question. Can I answer it for you? What is prayer? Speaking. That's all it is, speaking to God. Just as you speak, I speak to Stephen when I came in this morning. Me and him spoke. Now, was that prayer? No, but we, had, we communicated. Well, that's the same thing it is with God. It's communication. It's just opening up your mouth just as you would with your, with, with your wife or a friend or anything else. See, that's what God wants. He just wants us to talk to Him. Just the way we would talk to normal people. I see people, oh, thou almighty God, thou art the one that loved thee and delivered, thou art this and thou art that. God says, where are you at? God knows where we're at. God knows, hey, see, I speak to God, I say, hey God, here I am again, it's me, I blew it and I need another help, or God, here I am, could you help me with this problem that I got, or maybe, God, I just want to tell you I love you, I just want to say I praise you today, I lift up your name above all names, God, I just want to praise you, communication is what prayer is. And that's all prayer is. Now, if we pray in the Holy Ghost, we might, if we pray in our understanding, that's what God wants. He wants us to pray in the Holy Spirit so that sometimes we, there's a battle that's going on and we need to pray in the Holy Spirit. It's speaking in tongues, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Praying in the Holy Spirit because we need to defeat something that, that language will defeat for us. Are you with me? Prayer. God says, when you, I call you and come to pray to me. And then he goes on to say, and I, listen to this. Listen, when we call on God, he's already says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and future. Then you will call on me and come and pray for me, to me. And I, this is God, then I will listen to you. How many of you ever think God's not listening? Oh, come on now, be truthful. I think that sometimes, all the time, a lot. God, you just can't be listening because if you were, you would have heard that prayer and you would have answered it. Well, that's true to a sense. 
But see, sometimes God won't answer your prayer because He knows it does you harm. See, sometimes, have you ever prayed something and two or three days later or maybe a month or maybe an hour, maybe a year later, you say, God, thank you for not answering that prayer because I see the destruction it would have brought if you did. But see, that's God, though. He knows the plan. He knows the hope. He knows the future that He has for each and every one of us. He knows, and I've got to go on here. I've got to re re finish reading this. And I will listen to you. Now listen, I like this part. You will seek me. You will seek me. You, in other words, you're going to go. Remember hide and seek? You used to play that as a child. Oh, where are you at? Oh, you're not in the closet. Whoop, you're not, you're not behind that rock. Whoop, are you be underneath that chair? No, 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 no. God says you'll seek me. But guess what? He's not hiding from you. <laughs> Glory be to God. He's not hiding from you. He's right there in front of you saying, Seek me and find me with all your heart. When we search for God with all of our heart, we will find Him. We don't have to look far. We don't have to look wide. We don't have to climb a mountain. We don't have to go in the valley. We don't have to go deep in the water. We don't have to swim. We don't have to walk on the water. All we got, we don't have to fly down from the sky. All we got to do is just speak the name of Jesus and God will appear to us. Jesus says, if you call upon me, I will answer. He says, if you call upon me, I will answer. In 2 Peter 1, 4, it says, Whereby, as given unto us exceedingly great precious promises. That's what God does for us. He gives us that promise. And it goes on to say, in, uh, Deuteron in Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14, it says, I will be found by... Listen, I love this. I love this. Sometimes you see something that you read over and over and over and over and over again, and you miss what it says. Have you ever done that? i got to close here, but have you ever done that? I can't close yet. i got a couple more minutes. It says, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Declares the Lord. When we seek after Him, we will find Him. He declares that. And then He says, I will bring you back from captivity. What captivity? The captivity that the enemy has upon you. See, the enemy, like, like I was saying from the beginning, last night I was captive in what my mind was going through and what I was looking at that I was facing. But I seeked out and I saw God and I found God. And He answered me when I call upon Him. I had to use his word to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in my life as it is in heaven. Give me this day, Lord. Or for instance, last night, I said, Lord, give me this night what I need, my daily bread. And he gave it to me. See, God will do the same for you. You might be today, listening to the sound of my voice and saying, well, I really don't believe in this Jesus. You know, I heard about him, but I don't know. Is he real? I'm going to tell you yes. But see, I can tell you he's real all, all I can. But until you reach out and find him, until you reach out and take him for his word, for who he is to you, for your Savior, then you will know he's real. See, I can tell you over and over and over and over, Jesus is real. Are you going to listen? No, but when you reach out and you find him and you wrap your arms around him and you say, God, here I am, God's going to say, here I am. Now, listen, I want you to just say a simple prayer with me before I close. I promised myself that I'd never not do this without saying a prayer before we close. If you don't know Jesus, say, Father God, I come to you and I ask that you accept me the way I am. I ask you to let me have Jesus in my heart, to live afresh and anew for you, Father. I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, thank you for bringing me into your kingdom 
and into your family. Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to get on the internet here and send a message to Pastor Mike or to Jesus Loves You, to Jesus is Lord Ministries, and let them know, and let them know that you accepted Jesus. And Pastor Mike has something for you, I'm sure. If he don't, well, I do, but he has books for you. He, have a, he has a book on salvation. He has a book on promises of God. But he will let you know how great it is for you. Now, until next time, this is J.R. Wells saying thank you for listening. Have a blessed day. In Jesus' name, amen.